All right, everybody. So I'm going to do some short lectures about the excretory system. I really just should have called this the urinary system, but it is, it's the urinary system. So for the first part, what I was going to do is just basically draw out the urinary system, kind of talk about a couple of things. I feel like the urinary system anatomy is not actually that complicated. So essentially you want to understand, you know, what are, what are the structures that are part of the urinary system, like, and where are they located? So remember, there are two kidneys. So there's a right kidney and there's a left kidney. You just want to remember that the right kidney sits a little bit lower than the left kidney because of the liver. And then, of course, the kidneys and basically everything in the urinary system is retroperitoneal. So that means it's back behind the parietal peritoneum. And as a result, it has to have a couple of things um, to basically make sure that it, it remains in place on, on the backside of the body wall or like on the dorsal surface, essentially. So one of those things that kind of helps a little bit is there should be a fat capsule around the kidney. That's called the pararenal fat capsule. So you guys label it so you know what that is. And then also covering the kidney itself, you should see this in lab if you haven't already seen it in lab. I'm just going to kind of make it as like a little bit of like some hatch marks is there is a renal or a fibrous capsule that actually goes over the kidney or superficial to the kidney to help make sure that the kidney um, is protected from anything that might be in the interstitial space. Okay. So that's on both sides. Then the kidney is going to have a hilum area, which is this indent right here, right? Because the kidney is bean shaped. It's got a con vex area that's lateral and a concave area that is more medial. In the hilum area, area, the hilium, I call it the hilum area. In the hilum area, this is where blood vessels and the ureters are going to come out. So the ureters are really small muscular tubes that are also retroperitoneal, and they should be right where the renal artery and then the renal vein are also located. Okay, so the renal vein actually is going to be the more superficial blood vessel. So you should see that like that. So you'll have two ureters that are going to travel down the dorsal surface. And basically, they enter posteriorly at the bladder. Okay, so the bladder is going to be situated anterior for both men and women. It's like right back behind uh, the pubis and the pubic symphysis. It's just a hollow muscular sac that basically is meant to hold urine, okay? It is a sac, but it actually has essentially four sides. So when you look at it in a sagittal view, what you should see is that there's a ligament in the front that's attached to the front body wall. And then there are gonna be two ureters that basically come down to the posterior side of the bladder. Sorry about my weird shape right there. And then the bottom portion is where the urethra comes out. Okay, so a lot of people ask me about this urachus right here. The urachus is basically just a ligament that comes off the anterior portion of the bladder that attaches to the anterior part of the body wall. You should be able to see it in like the sagittal section models in lab. And sometimes in your cat, it's like really long, this like really long, gross, like stringy thing that comes off the front part of the bladder. Okay. If we get to development, we'll talk about that. But if we don't get to development, then we won't talk about that. Basically, what I mean is like what it's developed from. I have to forgive my crazy drawing. It went a little bit sideways there. Okay. So remember, inside of the bladder, basically where the urethral openings are, and then where the um, where the ureter openings are, and where the urethral opening are openings are going to be. There's a triangular space, and this is called the trigon. Okay, it's usually kind of the flat bottom or inferior portion of the bladder, essentially. So we got our kidney. We have our ureters. Remember, spelling here is going to be important because if you don't spell ureter right and you spell urethra, the ureters and the urethra are different things. Right? 
So the kidney is going to have a fibrous capsule that's going to surround it. It has a pararenal fat capsule. that surrounds it, okay? Um, and then when you cut the kidney on the inside, we're gonna look at the structures of the, the kidney. Those are usually the things that are a little bit more difficult. Things you want to remember too about the urethra here is that for women, the urethra is going to be very short, but for men, the urethra actually has three parts. So let's just say that this is the male urethra right here, okay? So we'll, we'll just make this male. Essentially how you make this male is you're going to draw a prostate gland around the proximal portion of the urethra and then just make your urethra really long like that. And there's the urethral opening. And I'll draw some of the sphincters for you guys too so you know exactly where those are. So this is the prostate gland for, for men. So the portion of the urethra that is surrounded by the prostate gland is called the prosthetic urethra. Pretty sure I spelled that wrong, but that's okay. And then you're gonna have the pelvic diaphragm muscles, which will be like right about here, as well as the urogenital diaphragm. So because it's the urogenital diaphragm, right? It's the urinary system plus the um, the genitalia diaphragm muscles. One of those muscles that I'm going to try draw a little bit darker right there, this is the external urethral sphincter. So the internal urethral sphincter is right here at the base of the bladder, and that's the one that is under auto automatic control and just releases once your bladder gets full. The external urethral sphincter is the one that's under your control. That's internal urethral sphincter. Okay. So right where the external urethral sphincter is, this is called the membranous or intermediate uh, urethra. I just call it the membranous one. And then the rest of the urethra is called the spongy urethra. Because it's gonna be surrounded by erectile tissue and that erectile tissue is called the corpus spongiosum, okay? So this is like just a, hopefully like a nice brief overview of the anatomy of the urinary system. For women, let me just like, if this is, fe let's say this is female on this side, They don't have a prostate gland. So their internal urethral sphincter is right at the base of the bladder. And then their external urethral sphincter is also in the urogenital diaphragm. It's part of the urogenital diaphragm. So their urethra is much shorter. And then the opening or the urethral orifice is basically right underneath that um, external urethral sphincter. Okay. Because that inter that actually exits in the vulva area as well as, well, the vulva area is the whole um, external genitalia for women, I should say. It's just inside of the vestibule area, which is inside of the labia minora, okay? So we haven't got to there. If we haven't got there yet in the reproductive system, we will eventually. So the next part, I'm gonna show you the internal portions of the kidney. I really hope I didn't forget anything here in the urinary system, but if I did, come ask me some questions at office hours.